What's happening, everybody? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video and in a future series of videos I'm gonna come out with on this channel, I'm gonna talk all about Bootstrap Flex and how it operates. I'm gonna go through all these different components, but for this first video, I wanna focus all about how Bootstrap Flex works from a responsive standpoint and just basically describe how it works in HTML and CSS. And with that, let's get started. All right, so what I have started here is I have basically the get started section of Bootstrap. You can find that in the doc section of getbootstrap.com. If I scroll down the page, essentially I'm looking for is include the Bootstrap CSS and JS. I simply copied this to my clipboard and dropped it in my HTML file down below. The one change I actually, two changes I made from this template was I added a CSS file as well. We're gonna just use this black border just to showcase where things are moving around within Bootstrap. And also in here, I did include the container with the hello world. So what this looks like, if I then run my server, open with live server, bada bing, bada bang, and bada boom. It just shows hello world and the power of the container is it contains those breakpoints. You can see it moves, grows, and shrinks based upon the size of the browser that I have. That's important because we are gonna focus on breakpoints within the Flex environment. So what I first wanna do is I wanna set up a Flex environment. What I'm gonna do is inside of the container and below that hello world, I'm gonna say div class, and in here to make this all of a sudden magic happen, we have to type the phrase D, D, Flex, not F, not quite sure where that came from. So what Flex does is it turns things from essentially going down the page in traditional HTML to side by side, making them almost like float in a way. I hate to use the word float as it's not a float, it's a Flex. So check this out. What I can do is if I say div, I'm a div. I can also write then here, p tag, I'm a paragraph. And notice what happens. This I'm a div, if we take off the D flex, as in turning off the flex component, just becomes a div and a paragraph. Now, why is this important? If we think about it from a pure HTML standpoint down below, when I bring in this D flex, think about the parent and the children, not so much div and peas, but parent div and child div. So what's happening here, and this is how Flex really gets its power, is essentially whatever's inside of this parent becomes the Flex components. It doesn't matter if it's a div or a paragraph, or I can even write an H2 if I really wanted. I'm in H2. What's gonna happen is, is that's gonna move across the page in a Flex environment. Now I built this border just to show you what it looks like. If we copy this, and let's turn off for just a second this D flex. There we go, now we're back to div paragraph H2. If I then add this class of black border and just copy it throughout all three sections, you'll notice now because all those invariably go across the page as a block line element. If we then change this back, so if I say div class d flex, notice what happens. The box will expand essentially to the size or width of the content that it has. So essentially I am a div is as wide as the box. I am a paragraph is as wide as the box. And I am an h2 is of course as wide as the box as well. Here's the thing, if I try to make this responsive, notice how it doesn't move. Check this out again, if I'm moving back and forth, yeah, the type does grow and shrink with the H1 and the H2, but the placement of these three boxes doesn't move. That's because by default, Dflex is mobile first. Bootstrap 5 especially said we're going mobile first and then essentially desktop and tablet second. What does that mean? That's essentially saying that all breakpoints from mobile on up will have flex. Well, here's the problem. What if I don't 
want to flex this? What if I want this back in this alignment down the page? Well, instead of saying like turn off flex, we add something else to it. Check this out. I'm going to say D L G flex. Now watch what happens. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Let's look at it again. If we move out, come on browser. We hit one size. Nope. Didn't get there yet. And magic. Well, not really magic. That's because I said when it hits the large size or larger, enable flex. The great part about flex is that in a mobile environment, I don't have to worry about it. So essentially saying that the what used to be small slash extra small, essentially saying medium, small, and extra small slash mobile, turn off the flex. Don't kick flex into gear, thereby making a one column design inside of flex. That's pretty radical. It does take a little bit of a mind twist because it doesn't say like no flex by word only. So I think about those breakpoints that bootstrap, it's always important to know that they are going to be mobile first. And so what happens is, is those divs, paragraph, and H2s will just become div, paragraph, and H2. Now, do I recommend mixing divs, paragraphs, and H2s? No. What I recommend doing of a best practice is let's turn off those or take out those. I really recommend keeping the same area or the same divs in the same response because to me it's also hard to keep track if you look at it i'm not going to save this just yet but notice how the spacing the paragraph has spacing and so does the h2 but the div inherently 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 doesn't that was a tongue twister so to me it's really hard to control the design now here's what i do recommend doing I do recommend using all the same either divs, H's, paragraphs. I wouldn't use all the same H's because you only have one heading, but I guess you could have three paragraphs. I still use the divs for design work. If I save this, that looks so much cleaner. Now I'm able to control the design from this arena. If you want to take it a step further, because don't forget that this deflex affects only the immediate child. What does that mean? Well, in this area, I'm a div. What I would do then if I want to add more is I would then say H2, I'm a header inside of a div. And then here, the paragraph, I'm a paragraph inside of a div. Now watch what happens. Notice how this looks a little bit better. That's because the header right here is not going next to the paragraph. The flex, I keep saying the flex, like I'm personalizing it. Just flex, eh, whatever. I'm not quite sure of the exact whole language. But the flex, nope, there I am again, basically says the immediate child is the one it controls. So I don't have to worry about the H2 and the P inside of its kind of grandparent or the parent of a parent because now I have to worry about just the actual divs moving around. So check this out. If I go, of course, small, medium, I'm still D large flex. So when I hit that large breakpoint, there we go. And notice how that that header and paragraph still stay the same. Now we're getting into a little more, more advanced design as we have kind of these three layers of pieces. We have our top, Deflex, our kind of middle black border, and then we have our H2 and our paragraph. This is where it's really important to understand how flex operates as it doesn't go all the way down. Now, in theory, if I want to go extra crazy, I could throw a D L G flex, and all of a sudden my parent and my child and my child all of a sudden become flexible. And now we got a little bit of crazy town going on right here. Do I recommend doing this? Sometimes. And we'll get into this in future videos as we explore more of how the flex box works. Let's turn that off right here so it gets a little more cleaner in there.
But this is where you want to get started. Really start understanding how flex operates from just a movement position and the break points within bootstrap to move it successfully back and forth on the page.